I'm sharing mistakes that I made in my past that you can avoid if you want your hair to flourish and thrive. The first mistake that I made in my relaxed hair journey was over processing my hair. Over processing your hair is a no no if you are relaxed. It's going to lead to thinner hair. You'll notice that your hair is thinner immediately after you over process your hair, and over time, you'll notice that your hair will start to break at a fast rate. I spaced my relaxers out. Now I do them every 16 to 20 weeks. Also, instead of combing the relaxer through, what I do now is put the relaxer on. I still apply the relaxer in small to medium sized sections, but I rub it in now instead of combing it in. And that makes a difference in how much texture I have after I finish letting my relaxer process. The second mistake that I made on my relaxed hair journey is using the wrong products and continuing to use products that I knew were not right for my hair but I use them anyway. These could have been products that dried my hair out, products that damaged my hair in the long term, products that made my hair unmanageable, products that really didn't improve the overall health of my hair. They were just okay and just getting me by. Now, I do not settle for that at all. If a product does not work for my hair, like I'm talking about after I use it, I'm like, ooh, yeah, like, like if it doesn't do that, then why is it in my routine? Why is it in my regimen? Why am I spending my money on this? Let's get this out of here and let's move on to something that's actually that I'm going to see results from and that my hair is going to benefit from. Otherwise, I have so much other things that I could do with my money and time than use products that don't work for my hair. And I want you to be the same way. If you have products that you can think of that just really messed up your hair, you didn't like the way your hair felt after, do not try it again. That is a sign that you should not be using that on your hair. I wanna use products that make my hair feel soft, that make my hair look shiny, that make my hair manageable, products that make it easier for me to style my hair, and products that make me fall in love with the way my hair looks. And I encourage you to do the same. I am willing to invest more money in my hair care products and hair care tools. I would typically buy products that were around like 10 to $15 for my hair, and that is what I would stick with. But what I noticed was that these products were doing good for my hair. These products made my hair manageable, but my hair was not thriving. My hair was not getting longer. My hair was not getting thicker. My hair did not have that shine that I wanted. My hair was soft, but it just wasn't, I was just ready to take it up a notch. Little by little, I started spending more money on the products that I was using for my hair. I believe I started with my shampoo. First, I invested in a higher end shampoo that I knew that I had used before that I had great results in. Once I did that, then I started investing more in my conditioner and I just took it step by step. Let me know if you think it's important to spend more money on your products and tools or have you seen results and is your hair thriving just by using drugstore products and products that you've used for a long time that don't cost you that much. The third thing that I stopped doing when it comes to my relaxed hair that I believe has made a huge difference is I switched from no lie relaxers to lie relaxers. No lie relaxers are the relaxers that you see most likely in your beauty supply store, Walmart, Target, drugstore that come in the box. The box relaxers have everything you need in the box to have a successful relaxer day. You're gonna have your relaxer cream, you're gonna have your activator, you're gonna have your shampoo, you're gonna have your conditioner. Sometimes it comes with a pre-treatment or a post-treatment and this is a really good thing and a great marketing tool for people who do their hair at home, who do not want to go out and buy all the products. It's great and it's fabulous 
fabulous and I used box relaxers for a long time. What I noticed was that after I used the box relaxers, my hair just felt dry, my hair would break over time. The active ingredient in these relaxers, which I believe is calcium hydroxide or calcium something, if I'm wrong, I will put the correct name of what it is on the screen, but that active ingredient is very drying and over time it will dry your hair out you already know what happens when your hair is dry when your hair is dry it turns brittle and it breaks off and this is because that active ingredient leaves behind calcium deposits on your hair if you like to use those type of relaxers or if you live in a place that has hard water you can still use those relaxers just use what's called a chelating shampoo i think that's how you pronounce it I didn't know that and I was not doing that. So those relaxers left behind a lot of calcium on my hair and scalp. I had scalp issues, I had hair issues, and they just did not work well for me. Once I switched, to the lye relaxer, I had a much better experience. Not only did my hair just feel softer after, I noticed that over time my hair thickened up again and it was just better for me. Let me know if I'm wrong because I can be very heavy handed when it comes to products, but they didn't, they don't put enough shampoo in there. They don't put enough conditioner. It's, it's not enough. Like I shampoo my hair until it ain't no more relaxer in there. I use a color-coded shampoo so that I can make sure I'm not leaving any relaxer residue behind. Not only did it come with like this much shampoo, but there's no color indicator or anything like that in the one that I was using that would let me know that I had rinsed out all of my relaxer. The fourth thing that I had to stop doing when it comes to caring for my relaxed hair is I had to stop neglecting my relaxed hair. I would neglect my hair. I would only do my hair when really it was time to wash it. I would wear wigs. I would put my hair in harsh styles so that I didn't have to do my hair. Those styles would pull out my edges. They were too tight so they would snap my hair. They would make my scalp dry. It was just bad. Now I make it a point to tend to my hair every Every single day. Not only do I wrap my hair, which is something that I've always done within my hair care regimen, but I take it a step further. I make sure my ends are moisturized. I make sure my strands are moisturized. This is something that I was missing previously because I was so scared about my hair being weighed down, about my hair looking oily, that I was just not worried about what my hair needed. My hair needs to be moisturized throughout the week. It needs its vitamins throughout the week. It needs to have some sort of serum, some sort of oil, some type of light cream on it throughout the week, either on an every day or other day, other day, either every day or every other day basis to keep it moisturized, to keep it hydrated. I know that my scalp produces oils that is supposed to do its job when it comes to moisturizing my hair, but my ends are all the way at the bottom. So because my scalp is all the way right here and my ends are at the bottom, I just help my hair out by adding just a little bit of product to the ends of my hair since these are also the oldest part of my hair and have been through the most, have been with me the longest. I make sure I baby my ends and take really good care of them so that I can retain my hair. If you struggle with length retention, thickness of your hair, I would pay very close attention to your ends because if you think about it, our hair is growing, but what we need to be maintaining is not only our scalp, that's very important so that our hair can grow and come out healthy when it does grow in, but we also wanna maintain the hair that we are, that we're getting that's coming in. So that's why I have taken it a step further and make sure I take care of my hair and my ends and my scalp on a daily basis. Not only does taking care of your hair on a daily basis and tapping in with your hair, giving it what it needs on a daily basis, help your hair to look better, to grow longer, to grow thicker over time, but it will also help you to just have more manageable hair. 
a lot of people claim that their relaxed hair is unmanageable you know when it gets to a certain point i have never really had a problem with my relaxed hair being manageable and that is because i tap in with it every day and take care of it every day if you just leave your hair alone leave it balled up don't wrap it don't use the right conditioner don't take care of your ends don't get your ends trimmed that is when you're going to start having problems with your hair not only being unmanageable but unsightly not cute and not growing the fifth thing that i no longer do when it comes to my relaxed hair and was a big mistake that i was making and i encourage you to avoid this at all costs is just doing too much when i was natural i changed my hair all the time I changed my color, I would dye my hair, I would change my styles. Every week I had a different style and I was doing a lot because I was a person that got really bored really quickly and for me hair is one of the ways that I express myself so I would express myself through changing my hair all the time. I would wear different wigs every other week just because that was a faster way and an easier way to change my hair. Being being relaxed, I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. I think it's important to just really leave your hair alone, let your hair do its thing, take care of it, of course, every week, every day, in and out. But as far as changing the styles, getting different styles, one day you have a bun, one day you have a wig, one day you have braids, one day your hair is blonde, one day your hair is black, like, no. <laughs> I think it's best to just leave your hair alone, find a style that you can do that works well with you, that works well with your workouts, that works well with how you have to wear your hair to work or you know, for whatever you do for a living and stick to that and be consistent with that and consistent with how you're taking care of your hair. And I think over time you will see results. I know I have seen results. One of the areas that I'm focusing on is my crown and my size just to get them as thick as the back of my hair. The back of my hair is really thick. And if I could get my sides and crown to match that, I would be so happy. And the reason why I think my crown and my sides are not there yet is because for so long, I would just slick my hair back when I didn't like it. Or because I was going somewhere, I would get braids. Or I would tie my hair back in like a little small ball so I could put a wig on it. No, okay, this is my style. I stick to styles that are that I'm able to wear my hair down, that I'm able to wear my hair out because that just works best for me and I encourage you to do the same. Those are the mistakes I made. If you are new to your relaxed hair journey or you're starting over with your relaxed hair journey, I hope that these tips were helpful for you and these are some things that you can consider and implement into your routine. I love you and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.